What are the most famous words in the history of English sports commentary has died at the age of 81. For more than two decades, he was television's voice of football, but he will be best remembered for his description of Jeff Hurst's goal in the closing seconds of the 1966 World Cup final. The BBC's Barry Davis, a friend and former colleague of Ken, pays his personal tribute. Kenneth Walston Home was one of the names around whom the BBC built its reputation for coverage of sport. He joined the BBC in 1948, having served in the Second World War in Bomber Command and winning a DFC. His voice became an essential part of television's coverage of football. I doubt, though, whether he could have imagined this sort of studio when, in March 1964, he introduced the first programme of what was to become an institution. Welcome to Match of the Day, the first of a weekly series coming to you every Saturday on BBC Two. He was there when England failed. Oh, a lovely goal! My goodness, if he could turn on tricks like this, we ought to have him on the music hall. No. And he gave expression to England's greatest triumph, with words which ensured his own place and in the game's the history. Some people are on the pitch, they think it's all over. It is now. Number seven, Alan Ball, the hero then, remembers it now. I was hoping Jeff Hurst would pass the ball to me. There were people running past me and I thought, well, the game's over, but it wasn't. Then the ball flashed in the back of the net and I just went, that's it, we've done it. And I felt it, it is now, it's finished, it's over. But he put it in a uh, fantastic phrase. He remained in the country's affection. His thoughts on commentary, clear and always worth consideration. Now, on radio, silence is absolutely sinful. But on television, silence is golden. You know, on television, football matches, commentary. And um, I think it's very hard to break out of the radio commentary and get into uh, a television commentary. And Bobby Moore comes up to receive the Jules Rene trophy for England. Like that England team, Kenneth Walton Holmes set the standard to follow. Commentators, viewers, and his many friends in football will be saddened at his sudden passing. As far as I'm concerned, it was a wonderful thing to have been able to say, well, I did the commentary in 1966. Beat that. <laughs> Football commentator Kenneth Wollstone-Hill, who died at the age of 81. To an altogether gentler age of football now, to 1966, when England won the World Cup and victory was summed up in eight memorable words. They think it's all over, it is now. The commentator who coined the most famous phrase in football was Kenneth Wilsonholm, whose death was announced today. He was 81. Felicity Barr looks back at a career made famous by one match. Some people are on the pitch, they think it's all over. It is now. It's the most famous phrase in English football, which earned Kenneth Wilsonholm a place in sporting history and ensured he became as well known as the players who lifted the World Cup in 1966. I had no idea what I said until uh, two months later. Uh, they repeated the whole of the World Cup final. And I must say, I sat and watched the television and I was not a bad ending, was it? Hmm. For many fans, Wollstoneholm was as much a member of the victorious team as the players themselves and he remained friends with England's World Cup winners, who today led the tribute. He was a great man, he was more or less part and parcel of the 66 team as well. Certainly over the past years, as functions, Ken was always there when the 66 team was there, so he's really like part of the family, really. Kenneth Wollstoneholm was a bomber pilot in the Second World War before joining the BBC as a commentator in 1948, although he'd never even seen a television programme. He later became the first presenter of Match of the Day, setting the standard for future sports broadcasters. I think in a sense it's a shame that such a long and distinguished career will be remembered for one commentary line, but it is the greatest commentary line of all time. Alston commentated on 23 FA Cup finals and five World Cups, but England's greatest triumph was also his proudest moment. Felicity Barr, ITV News. Memories. England's 1966 World Cup winners have been paying tribute to legendary commentator Kenneth Wolstenholm, who's died aged 81. Sir Bobby Charlton believes his famous description of England's finest footballing hour will last forever. While Martin Peters says Wolstenholm was regarded as one of the team. And here comes Percy's Some people are on the pitch. 
they think it's all over. The game's out. English football's greatest moment and for Kenneth Walton home words that would never be forgotten. England's World Cup triumph in 1966 assured him a place alongside Bobby Moore and his team in the game's history. Jeff Hurst's goals won the World Cup. All Kenneth Walton home received was his standard £60 fee. It was special because, you know, it was at the last moment and England did go on obviously in the last seconds to win the World Cup. And I don't think he could have uh, written a better script than what he'd said on that day. Few people knew that as a bomber pilot during the war, Kenneth Walton Home had won the DFC. After joining the BBC, he hosted the first ever match of the day, commentated on 23 successive FA Cup finals and five World Cups. He was unhappy at being replaced in 1970 and often critical of the way television and football had developed. He occasionally returned to the microphone for Italian football and last year in his native northwest, he commentated on a bad-tempered Burnley-Blackburn game. But I wish that... Um these derby games wouldn't develop into a rough and tumble. Uh, he was a remarkable man. He had a delightful sense of humour, uh, which uh, showed more off the air than I think it did on, because he was serious about his commentating. He loved the game, he believed in it, he wasn't frightened to be critical, uh, he was a true professional. He was a fine man, Ken. He was the first, really. Um, I think a lot of us grew up. He was the only voice of television football and worthy of that description, a real pioneer. And July the 30th, 1966, uh, yeah. forever remembered by those uh, famous words. Yes, I mean, I've, I watched the World Cup final quite recently, and his commentary really stands the test of time, the whole commentary. Uh, he had a very uh, relaxed, measured style, and uh, no co-commentator, of course, it was all his own work. And what I liked about it was, it was never scripted. It was always a reaction to what happened, um, and the fact that he came out with those memorable words um, and that they are still so memorable today is because it was so natural. Kenneth Walsenholm died in hospital in Devon. He told friends he was optimistic about England's chances in this year's World Cup, but for him nothing could eclipse what happened at Wembley in 1966. England are the world champions. And those famous words. Will you mutter them again for us? I mean, some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Greg Milam, Sky Sports. Kenneth Wilson home. Veterans. Well, there will be a minute's silence in memory of Kenneth Wilson home, who died earlier this week. And also Sir Walter Winterbottom, the first England head coach who passed away last month. Ken Wilson home, of course, the first voice of football on television. probably know it's been a very sad week following the death this Monday of our old colleague Kenneth Walsenholm, aged 81. One of the game's great broadcasters, one of the game's great characters, and also one of the nicest gentlemen ever to pass through our offices. Ken joined the Football Italia team back at the start of our Italian coverage in 1992, after a truly illustrious career. He'd commentated on an astonishing 23 consecutive FA Cup finals and five World Cups for the BBC. The latter featuring, of course, in 1966, his and England's most celebrated moment. And here comes Hurst. He's got some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. It's four. Fittingly, a minute's silence was held this week before the England-Italy friendly in recognition of Ken and his contribution to the game. Because while the years passed, he remained as much as anyone a symbol of England's finest hour. Well, a quarter of a century on from that World Cup final, when Ken joined us then, there wasn't much that he hadn't done, but he still stood out as the friendliest, gentlest fellow around, becoming known as the voice of Football Italia and adding his unique touch to the show. Like everybody else, we'll miss him. One last time then. Thanks, Ken. <laughs>